भी उपनिषद सीरीज मौजूद वन हु लिव्स इन द प्रेजेंट मोमेंट वन हु लिव्स इन द प्रेजेंट मोमेंट एज सच एज यू आर यू लिव इन द पास्ट विच इज नो मोर और इन द फ्यूचर द फ्यूचर विच इज नॉट बोर्न एज यट and in this quest we miss the moment all that happens happens in this moment if you are available to this moment you can correct the doings of the past you can nourish and nurture your consciousness so that when the new season comes the bloom is of highest quality if your flower bed is not properly manured and when the season comes the bloom will not be of a quality it is this very moment available to you when you can prepare for the upcoming spring season also you can introspect on the shortcomings of the past what you had missed what you failed to do what you did not understand then you can correct all this this moment is important and this word maujood is most beautiful it is a urdu word but no muslim keeps this word keeps this name maujood majid is used as a name majid means grant it is one of the 99 names of allah subhanahu wa taala majid but no one keeps his name or the children's name as maujood maujood is beautiful it has two meanings literally it means one who is present and maujood means one who has inner presence i'm two meanings one he is present to the moment and he has an inner presence and this inner presence implies awareness alertness and one who is conscious and the second meaning comes from the first one who lives in the present moment one who is available to this moment those two things are the aspect of the same phenomenon if you are present inside you have a presence of consciousness the second thing will automatically happen you will be available to this very moment the future will mean nothing you are only concerned with what you have to do in this moment what is your bounden duties what is your responsibility as you understand you will not have any future only this moment exist only those who live in the present and those who are present to this present moment know what eternity is know what deathless life is know the mystery the inexplicable mystery of life but by knowing it does not mean you can explain it to the others you can simply indicate you can say how to reach it but you cannot say what it is and you cannot say why it is as well there is no why 
it simply is there without any explanation life goes on existing there is no why to it but philosophers go on weaving creating fabricating systems to answer the why but not a single answer has been true not a single question has been answered you have asked the wrong question from the very beginning and when the beginning is wrong no right answer can be there a wrong question will take you into the wrong answers why is a wrong question we when we focus on why philosophy starts and when we ask the question around what there is a vast difference between why and what what when you ask what it refers a new methodology begins a scientific inquiry begins when you ask why you enter into the realm of philosophy science never asks why religion does not ask why religion is the science of inner and science is the religion of the outer and between these two is philosophy just standing between these two philosophy goes on asking why and gets mixed up gets very much confused why cannot be asked should not be asked even if you find some explanation as to why the question will again have to be asked why does this world exist somebody says god created it then the question comes why did god create it and somebody may answer he created it for this or that then to the question goes on being relevant again and again each answer simply pushes the question a little deeper but the question is not resolved let us go into this particular story the story of inexplicable man this man was really a man of total presence that simply means that deep down in the dark night when everybody is fast asleep he must have been meditating but not telling anyone he must have been watching he was moving in the ordinary world but there must have been a witness a watcher an observer the observer by and by created the presence in him and he became a luminous presence as a result he is called mochud embodiment of that presence that has given him that has rendered him the name of mochud if you really are a man of presence that means deep down when the world is fast asleep you are awake meditating but no one knows so one day when he was walking through the garden of an ancient building near his home his wali salam this shining in green the mysterious guide of the sufis appeared to him now you have to understand this his is a name it refers to your innermost core but 
Muslims have given it a name Khizr as if a personified, just as Hindus have given a personification to the mysterious guide along the path, Narad the wandering sage, beyond time and space. So Khizr is just a name, named for your innermost core. When your center starts whispering things to your circumference, this is Khizr. Remember, I am not philosophizing anything. I am relating things to you. So you understand the deeper meaning of these scriptural injunctions that has been conditioned into your consciousness, into your mind. When your center starts whispering to you, when center, you mean circumference, you are the circumference, you are not aware of the center. His re refers to the center and that process through which the center starts whispering to you is his. When your fundamental being, the eternal being, the unborn, the unmanifest, start talking to your non-fundamental being, when the essential soul speaks with the non-essential, it is his speaking to you. This is just a metaphor. His is not someone outside. It is your innerness, the inner voice. When you become silent, when you become present, when you become mature, a moment comes when the inner guide starts speaking to you. That is the inner guide known as Khizr. When you are silent, utterly silent, there is no disturbance. You have become available to this present moment. The center starts whispering to you. So his appeared to him dressed in shimmering green. Green is the color of the Sufis. It green represents life. Green represents aliveness. When a tree is alive, it is green. The green trees, the green tree, it represents freshness, aliveness. It rep represents silence, peace. Sufis have chosen green as their symbolic color. Just to look at the green, you feel a kind of peace surrounding you. That is why it is so thrilling to go to the mountain, just sit by the side of a forest, Surrounded by mysterious trees, the grass is immensely significant. We go to the garden, sit by the plant, by the greenery. This is mysterious. It makes you again primitive, primordial. It reminds you of the primordial silence of the forests. It reminds you that once you were also a tree, as silent as the tree and as rooted as the tree, dressed in shimmering green, his appeared. This is the significance of the green color that Sufis use, the color of the cosmos. The color of freshness, aliveness, silence, 
peace, harmony, and oneness. The entire cosmos is soaked in the green color, the color of the peace, the color of the silence. And his actress, Mojit, by seeing, O oh, man of bright prospects, man of bright prospects, and remember, whenever your inner core speaks to you, it always speaks in this way. It never condemns you. It always says a man of bright prospects. Because there has never been a man who is not of bright prospect. Everyone carries within his womb the potentiality of being a flower. And that potentiality is bright prospect. You may not attain to it, that is an another matter, but it is your destiny. You could have attained it, you could miss it. If you miss it, it is your responsibility. If you, but the seed is there. You did not help it to grow. Otherwise, it would have become a great tree giving shelter to thousands of birds would have made their nests on it and thousands of travelers would have rested under its sh shadow. Flowers would have blossomed. The existence would have celebrated through you. The moment you blossom, the existence celebrates in a myriad way through you. Whenever someone attains to enlightenment, the existence celebrates the arrival of the spring, the season of the spring. If you do not become a tree, only you are responsible. Nature has provided all that is needed. Therefore, each man is a man of bright prospect because each man God has created, each man has God as his ultimate flowering. You are the ultimate flowering. As such as you are, you are in the seed form, but the seed is the flower. Hidden behind the seed in its womb is the great potentiality of becoming not only one flower but myriads. And Khizru said to Marjud, O man of bright prospect, leave your group and meet me by the riverside in three days' time. Saying this, he disappeared. The voice appeared and told him that meet me, leave your work, and meet me by the riverside in three days' time. When you go deep into meditation, it will happen again and again. A moment will come when your circumference and center are very close. There is no distance between the two. The center has become the circumference and circumference has become the center. There is no barrier, not even a curtain. And you will hear the center loudly, clearly whispering to you. And again, you will be clouded. Again, old habits, thoughts will come in you. And they will cloud your inner ways. And the center and circumference will fall apart. This will happen many times to you too. 
it is going to happen to those who are around me many times. Many times it is going to happen to you as well. You are on the way. The center starts whispering to you. All of a sudden a moment comes when a distance comes the center. And the circumference fall apart. Many times you will come very close to the center that you will feel almost enlightened. You will feel you have arrived and again it is lost. It is natural. Before it settles forever, it happens many times. Before ultimate samadhi, is attained, thousands of satoris happen. Samadhi is a beautiful word emerging out of Sanskrit language has two separate words, sama and bhi. Sama in Sufi language means a congregation of like-minded people engaged in eternal song and dance. And Sama also means equanimity and through this eternal song and dance equanimity is created. And He refers to intelligence. You, when your intelligence attains to equanimity, harmony, all oneness, that state is referred to as samadhi. Sama, the congregation, according to the congregation of the like minded, where the dance and the song is. around and it creates a oneness, a harmony and he the intelligence. When your intelligence becomes, this reaches to the state of equanimity, it is samadhi. And before this happens, there will be a thousands of temporary moments when you get these small glimpses, just like a framed image. You open the window to look at the outside. You have not yet come out under the open sky, under the sun and the rain. Through the window you are getting a glimpse. The opening of the window and closing it again. Suddenly the door opens and you see the vision and there is a lightning experience. And again it is gone and the darkness settles. So Mawjood, when he heard Khizr salam speaking to him, leave your work and meet me in three days time by the riverside. Saying this, Khizr disappeared. Mawjood went to his superior in the trepidation and told them that he had to leave. It came as a shock to the people. And whenever the center speaks to the circumference for the first time, you will be in trepidation. You will be in a state of constant trembling. Whenever center speaks to the circumference for the first time, you will be in a state of trepidation, a constant Trembling. You will feel as if you are dying. You will feel. You want to know what is happening to me. Am I going crazy or mad? When the center speaks for the first time, you cannot figure out what it is. You have never heard that voice before. You had never thought that someone lived inside you. You had never thought that any inner voice was there. 
and any inner voice was coming to you. You have become so engaged in the outer, the voice that comes from outside, the parental voice, the voice of the teachers, the voice of the creeds to become reality to you. Nothing else mattered except the parental voice, the voice of the teachers, the voice of the priests. And in that process you have forgotten your own voice. Who is greater, the mother or the master? Now he asks, if the mother says kill the master, then I have to follow my mother's order. Or if the master says, kill your mother, then whom I have, whom have I to obey? It's, he seems to be obsessed with mother. He will need to kill his mother. That is what Jesus means when he says, unless you hate your father and mother and your brother, you cannot follow me. This is the most beautiful statement. According to Sikh religion, one of the sutras of Japji, Nanak Sutra, says, which is known as the last Mool Mantra, Pavan Guru Pani Pita Mata Dharat Mahat. It goes in that sequence. Pawan Guru. Pawan means the wind, the air that blows, the breeze, is given the status of a master. No one has seen it. You can simply feel it. When your palm is open, the breeze is touching it. The moment you try to close the palm, the breeze is no more. You cannot capture it. It is so delicate. Pawan Guru, Pani Pita. Pani means water. The father is water-like. This is the state of consciousness. It is flowing from a higher altitude to the lower. Mata Dharatmaha. And the mother is earth that sustains everything. Every creation, animals know their mother. But to know father, you need awareness. You are connected to the mother by instincts, but you are connected to your father by awareness. That's the difference. You are connected to mother by instincts. All animals live by instincts. To recognize the mother is not a greater thing. To recognize the father is one of the greatest things. And greater than that even is to recognize the master. Pavan Guru Pani Pita Mata Dharat Mahat. And then he continues, Divas Rathui Dai Daya Kile Sadajada. Changyanya Guryanya Vache Dharam Hudur. Kele Re Kele. Jinni Nam Dhyaya Gai Masat Kadghar. That is the methodology how you can move from instincts to awareness and awareness to the state of bliss. Remembering that which is living in that moment to moment. So when Jesus says, if you are, unless you hate your father and mother and your brother, you cannot follow me. And there is a case of case on record of a, even a, a strong a stranger death a disciple of Buddha was taking leave of him he was going to a far away pilgrimage to spread Buddha's words he touched Buddha's feet he walked there for his blessings. Buddha blessed him and said to the assembly, Look brothers, this is a rare disciple. And what is his rarity? 
he has killed his mother and father. Unless you kill mother and father means the parental voices that keeps on coming to you again and again to listen to your inner voice, to listen to the master, to follow an awakened one. You have, Jesus says, Jesus was very rustic in his ways and means, not as educated as Buddha was. So he says, unless you hate your father, mother and brothers, you cannot follow me. And when Buddha said, look brothers, this is a rare disciple. He, and what is his rarity? He has killed his mother and father, the parental voices. Buddha had never said anything like this before. And nobody has ever thought that this man could kill his father and mother. He was one of the most silent, peaceful, loving person they had ever seen. He was compassion incarnate. Somebody said, ask, we don't understand. What do you mean by saying that he has killed his father and mother? And Buddha said exactly that. He has killed the voice of his father and the mother inside him, the parental voice. That is very deep rooted in you. This man goes on asking about the mother. This man goes on asking about the mother and the father. My feeling is that he is afraid. He has become a follower. Now he is afraid to go back home. He is afraid of his mother. Now he is in a great tension. Once you have chosen a master, all else is no longer relevant to you. Mother, father, nothing is relevant to you. These are revolutionary words. If you have not chosen a master, they are all relevant. The moment you choose master, you have to leave those voices. The master is bound to say to you, kill your father and mother. And when he says to kill your father and mother, he does not mean literally, but psychologically. And one day the master will have to say to you, now you kill me too. According to Sufis, there are three stages. tark -e -tark. first you have to abandon the logic. tark -e -upba, the desire for the other world. And Tarkimola, you have to kill. Buddha says, if you meet me on the road, kill me. In the beginning, it was the parental voice that was guiding you, the voice of your father and the voice of the mother was guiding you. You moved from the parental voice to the voice of the master. Then every little problem comes in, you rush down to the master, master, help me, I have this problem, how to solve it. Then you have to abandon the master as well and the center and the circumference have become one. You move from the center to the circumference and the circumference starts whispering you. In the beginning, the whispers are very silent, quieter. As if you are in a slumber and you hear something, someone tells you and all of a sudden these voices, this voice deepens. You can hear clearly the voice coming to you. 
something that was hidden in the wilderness now becomes clear to you. So when Buddha says to kill your father and mother, not literally but psychologically, and one day you have to kill the master as well. That is what Buddha says, oh, one day he appreciates this man. Here is a rare sannyasi, a rare follower who has killed his father and mother utterly and on some day he says, if you meet me on the way, kill me. If any day I come between you and the ultimate, kill me too. If I come in, in between you and the existence, the ultimate, kill me. Buddha says, along the way when you meet me, you kill me. The master has to teach two things. He has to teach first to kill your parents, kill your teacher, kill your priests, and one day he has to teach you to kill him as well so that you can go in absolute freedom so that even the master does not remain any longer a barrier for you. When for the first time the center speaks to you, there is bound to be a great turmoil chaos because all that was settled will become unsettled. All that has been established will be disturbed. All that you were feeling secure in is no longer secure. All that you have been feeling as meaningful is no longer meaningful. Everything will go topsy-turvy because the center is totally a different approach towards the reality than the circumference. When the depth speaks to the circumference, there is bound to be a great trepidation. And this is what happens. Maujud went to his superior in trepidation and told him that he had to go. The center has spoken to him. And he had to go and tell his superiors that I have to leave. So do. I have to leave. 